Hey there, uh, Matt Smudio back again with uh, um, continuing on our exploration of the user experiences around uh, fairly minimal installations of both uh, Ubuntu and Slackware. Okay, so where we left things off is um, we have both systems uh, having finished with a clean install and uh, we, we made various selections through that process to end up with uh, you know what we've got in front of us here. So uh, go ahead and uh, review those uh, other seg video segments if you want to see exactly what we did. Um, again, just to reiterate, this isn't a tutorial or a how-to uh, series. It's more of simply just kind of casually going through the user experience that one would, would find. Um, in this, you know, this particular uh, layout of systems that we've that I've chosen here, and you know, I'm going to do some kind of commentary along the way. So that's what this is. Uh, so what, where we're at here is these systems are both uh, clean install. With this is the Slackware side. This is the Ubuntu side over here. So uh, in the Slackware side, uh, we directly log in as root, and we can remember that the installer asked us to set the root password. So that's how we know that. Put the password in. So I'm logged in as root. You can do a couple of quick little examinations. You can look at home. There's no users under home. You can cat the Etsy password file. You can see there's no real users here. These are just all system and you know functionary type users. Could do a uh, look at the file systems. You can see we've got uh, four gig, you know, four and a half gig used in our 16 gig. Well, it looks more like 15 gig or so. Yeah, well, it's 16 gig, so we got like 10 gig left. We're 30 percent used on the root file system. Um, normally, I would set up a separate home file system uh, for where actual user data would kind of get stored. And that would be a much bigger file system. But for this demo purpose, you know, we're just flying with it this way. Uh, let's, uh, let's do the same thing over here. So in the Ubuntu install, you can remember that we uh, had to create a user. And that was matbot that I created. And my little no-nonsense password. And let's do the same kind of examination here. So we do ls home. You can see we have our one user that's there. We can cat Etsy password. And you can see same kind of thing. You know, pretty similar layout of user or logins with the addition of my one user that I have here. You know, the Slackware puts in this nobody user. U UID 99, GID 99 cannot log in. I think the, the idea there is it's kind of a guest type user that has no permissions no privileges anywhere. It's basically uh, something that processes can run as, or um, s certain things can connect as an, an anonymous type of user that that you know is safe. Like uh, one of the things this is used for is Samba. So, like uh, um, other machines that are accessing Samba shares will access those shares as that nobody user which again is relatively safe. It can't do anything on the box. It can only just see those files. So that's kind of the idea of that. Um, there's nothing really like that on the Ubuntu side. I don't think so. So you would, you would be on your own in terms of adding something like that. Although, you know, I, I personally have never really seen the need for a guest type user. I usually try to keep it so that, uh, you know, file ownership and permissions are correct enough that uh, any user that can log into the box can see uh, what, they, what they're supposed to see and can't see what they're not supposed to see. And then uh, services like Samba, um, I, actually ha I usually try to have a Samba user. And, uh, you know, again, f permissions and ownership are set up so that uh, that works right. Um, yeah, I don't know. There, I can see an argument for needing a, a generic user like that, but I don't know. I've, I've never really needed it much. So anyway, okay, so let's uh, proceed here. Um, I Again, I, I'll refer to this a few times. I have a, a, 
let me let me get out of this here. Um, I have a wiki that I keep uh, lots of my notes and lots of technical information in, and so I, one of the things I do is I, I or one of the things I have done is I've actually documented kind of my standard series of things that I care about on a new install, and I have it for Slackware here. So, uh, you know, we've actually done a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to refer to this. So one of the things I do is um, on, on a Slackware system, I make sure that there's an init script that will run. And I, put the, I make sure that I have this one line in here which sets the U limit for the number of hi file handles allowable for a proce per process at, at, a, at a much higher level than the default. Um, I like 32768. Seems to be a pretty good, generally good number for me. So this is one thing I, I, I usually do on my systems. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, let's see, what where is it at? It's at, uh, let me <laughs> bring back up my uh, reference here. So um, yeah, so sbin init script sample, and it needs to, be named init script, and then there needs to be a link in Etsy to it. So my, my instructions here are about populating that before I reboot from install, but let's just go ahead and uh, s bin init star. So here's, here's the init script sample. That's a good one to start out with. So I'm going to copy init script sample to init script. And make sure permissions look like we want them, which looks good. I'm going to VI the init script. And I'm going to um, put that line in. 32768. Okay, so we already had a uh, U limit for um, the dash C. I'm putting in a new U limit for, and the H is for the hard limit. So I'm setting the system hard limit of the N U limit, which is the number of file handles uh, per process, and I'm setting it to 32768. So I'm going to do that. And now my init script is in place, but Slackware likes it also to exist in Etsy. Oops. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a symbolic link to sbin init script. Okay, so I have a link to the sbin init script in Etsy, and I believe that ensures that this gets honored at boot time. Now, normally, when I'm following my checklist, I would make this change. I would put this in, in that time when I manually did the Lilo setup, where I was done with the install, but I, I went out to a shell before rebooting. That is when I would actually do this, so that when I rebooted, it would come up with my new U limit in it. It's not, not that important for the moment, but that's normally how I would do it. Uh, okay, so there's that. I uh, do not, l let's, uh, let's take a look at my uh, Ubuntu. Let's get this over side by side. Wait a minute, I guess that is over here. Okay, so I'm gonna go Linux, Ubuntu, Okay, so I do not have, okay, so details to initialize a new instance. Pulse audio, blah, blah, 32-bit. I'll talk about 32-bit later. Skype, TCP listen, some stuff for specific applications. Okay, so I do not have the equivalent step in Ubuntu, and I think that, you know, I'd have to really dig to, to figure that out again, but I believe in the past... I've figured out that Ubuntu actually sets that number higher. Let's check that out. So, fi open files. Oh, geez, that is really low. We don't want that. And uh, I guess I, I'm just discovering that now. Uh, wait a minute. That's open files. Yeah, that's N. That's right. Okay. So, that is real low. I'm going to have to uh, come up with a, I don't actually know how to make that change in Ubuntu right now. I'd have to dig that up. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that later. Let's proceed with our known quantities here. So I've 
Do, 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 do. Where am, oh, I'm in the I'm in the Ubuntu. No, nope. Slack or side. Okay. So I've done my done all this. U limit init script. Oh yeah, I I like to add home bin to the path in Etsy profile. Um, I I usually like to change the root shell to KSH. I'm not going to bother with that on this deal because that's totally a personal preference. Uh, wheel group. Yes, that's another thing. You want to make sure you have sudo access set up. So I'm going to vi sudoers, and I'm going to go in and change. I like to, you know, once a user is actually has access to the box, they're in as a particular user, I, I just, I don't see the, the need to make them constantly keep entering their password. Um, you know, if, if if you haven't been able to keep the box secure enough for for a user to to only be logged in as themselves uh, legitimately, then it's it, in a, in many ways game. It's kind of game over anyway. So I always do the you know the wheel and and I only I only allow myself and really super trusted users to be in the wheel group to begin with. And so, um, and I'm very, very careful with really strong passwords and really uh, um, mature usage habits. I keep my own user ID pretty darn secure. So I just don't want to be constantly having to enter my password all the time. So I, uh, I set this uh, specification to be no password here, this uh, no password. So when I use sudo, I don't have to enter my password. And uh, so we set that. And what was that other thing we need to do here? Uh, oh, let's see. You limit. Oh, yeah. Adding home to the, that, to the profile. So in, in uh, Slackware, all we have to do is vi profile. Ooh. And there's a path setting here. I'm just going to enter add. Oops. Dollar sign home bin on the front, and again, this is this is a convenience, and I believe it's perfectly sound and legitimate to do so. We want users to have access to their own, you know, programs in their own bin directories, and have that override, uh, you know, system binaries, you know, in case the user wants to do that for themselves. So, I believe that's a pretty decent thing to do. So I do that. Uh, let's take another quick look here on the Slackware side. Okay, so wheel group. Okay, we're done with we're done with that. Um, then I would also normally do things like, you know, correct and populate Etsy hosts. Let, let, let me show you what that's about. So, BI hosts. The biggest thing is you shouldn't have Slackware for some reason populates hosts with 127.0.0.1. It has two entries. One is localhost, which is what it should be, and the other one is, you know, for the the host. And that's really wrong. That causes problems. So we need to 192.168.0. Uh, I can't remember what the actual number is we'll come back to that but demo slack this is the host name and there's two aliases the fully qualified domain name with the domain name on the end and then the actual just host name so I'm going to quick exit out of this and do an if config to see what my IP address is it's 167 so I'm going to go back in and make sure that that's uh, populated correctly 167 there we go so now my hosts file is as correct as it's going to be, probably. And that's pr pretty much all we need. I mean, we probably don't even really need this entry in here, but sometimes, you know, especially if for some reason DNS is not accessible, it's a good idea to have that in there. So I do that. All right. Uh, that was uh, Etsy host. We, we will, you know, we'll flip over to the Ubuntu side in a, in a bit here. I just want to finish this out. So let's see, change root shell to KSH. Totally a preference thing. I do sometimes, most of the time. I'm not going to hear. Etsy group to make sure 
users are in groups as desired. Now, th this is probably this is something I used to do in Slack, where I would just kind of edit the the group fi group file uh, manually and just kind of add stuff as I wanted to. I, I have I have kind of switched to kind of using the commands to make that happen. And the reason is is it's just a good habit to do that because on some systems, what happens to actually add groups, users to groups, and ma basically manage users in groups involves more stuff. Like if you're hooked into LDAP or if you're hooked into Active Directory or there's some other kind of you know policy driven type stuff underneath the covers. There, if you use the commands, all that stuff happens under the covers correctly, based on how the system is configured and set, you know, set up and everything. So just editing the groups file manually, it, I mean, it used to be something that was okay to do, or at least marginally okay to do. But now I, I would just use the commands, and those commands are things like, uh, like user add, group add, user mod. Uh, G password. Those those kind of commands will uh, al allow you to manipulate users, groups, and who's in what groups, etc. And you should use those commands. So we'll skip this for now. Uh, we can add users. We'll do that. Uh, sudoers. I did that already. Permit root login. Yes, this is in the SSH config. So there's some changes to SSH config I usually do. Let's go ahead and do that. SSH and in in the Etsy SSH directory, you'll see all these files. Most of them are keys, you know, for host key authentication and stuff. We're going to edit the sshd config. S G I S S H D config. And just quickly, again, this isn't a how to. This is not a tutorial or how to for, for what this stuff all means and how to do it. I'm just flipping through it fast just to give you an idea of the user experience that, uh, you know, I would kind of say one would get. Okay, uh, first thing is, uh, let's find permit root. Permit root. Permit root login. And they permit root login, they have it set to prohibit password, which means you have to have a key setup allowed for root login. I'm going to say no. I don't want to permit root login at all. And I think that's more secure. What I'm going to allow is I'm going to allow users that are in the wheel group to sudo to, to be a shell as root. Some people think that's not a good idea. I think it's fine. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I do. So um, there's another thing that I like to set in here, and it's the client alive interval and the client alive count max. So I uncomment these. I'm going to set this to 30. I guess I could have left uh, the the count max alone, but these two kind of go together, so I uncomment them both, and I set that to 30. That's the changes, you know. And sometimes I'll put a permit user, uh, you know, permit users line in here. I'm not going to do it for this one because it's just a demo, but uh, you know, you can basically do permit users or allow allow users. That's it. Yeah. And then it's a list of users. So I could just say, me. And this means that I'm the only user that can actually even log in via SSH to this server. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, at this point, if I were to like reboot or something, I would essentially have locked myself out of this computer because I have not created an RK4N3 user yet. So he doesn't, that user doesn't belong to the wheel group and so cannot sudo over to uh, root, and I don't permit root login, the only way I could possibly log into this system is if I have access to the console, which I do. But let's say I didn't have access to the console I, I, and rebooted this computer, I'd be locked out until somebody could get to the console. So just these kind of things are, are uh, important to keep in mind. So my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my user, since that would be the next, you know, that would resolve this this lockout problem that I just mentioned. So, uh, you know, and I have uh, GID and UID that I use for my user across the board. So, actually, I'm going to end this video and I'm going to come back and do that in the next segment. So, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.